<laughs> Go ahead, sir. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to, the, to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Tonight is Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. This meeting is being held virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. Ellen, can we have roll call, please? Yes, Chairman Kerry. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Hi, Ellen. I'm here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Healy? Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Here. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Diago Wynn. Here. All present. Thank you. If we could all stand for a pledge of allegiance, Mr. Michaels, can you lead us? Sure can. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation under God. God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of previous meetings, minutes. Mr. Riley, I believe you have a motion for us. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of January 26, 2021 board meeting. Second. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Michaels. We have a motion to second. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries, thank you. Moving on to public comment. Mr. Emmett, anyone on the phone? No, sir, I don't have any, anyone in the waiting room. Very good, thank you. And we had no emails, so we are moving on for public comment. Communications, Mr. Emmett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kerry. Good evening, everyone. Uh, yesterday, we proudly welcomed back our students in grades pre-K to three to a four-day in-person schedule. Um, it was absolutely wonderful to see our youngest learners in together as they saw friends that they had only seen previously on the computer screen. The day featured a lot of work on routines and expectations, uh, as well as managing the increased person density in the buildings. Uh, continuing to employ our mitigation strategies is going to be absolutely critical in keeping the in-person learning model moving forward. But we were definitely glad to see everybody back. From a data perspective, um, we've seen very consistent uh, return to in-person learning. Uh, Hanmer School, 79.4% of our K-3 to students have returned in person. Charles Wright, 78.8% of our students have returned. Emerson Williams, uh, K-3, 77.8% have returned to in-person learning. At Highcrest, we had 85.8% returning to in-person learning, and Webb had 78.7% uh, of students returning to in-person learning. Uh, we do anticipate that there will be some additional fluctuation as parents become more comfortable and uh, we get into the flow. And obviously with our students that are uh, still learning remotely, we will continue to provide them the best possible education moving forward. <laughs> Um, from our experience yesterday, uh, as we debrief today at the administrative team, uh, we do ask our parents to exercise patience, caution, and awareness at drop off in the morning and pick up in the afternoon. Uh, we are finding a large volume of traffic at this point in time, and we think that's going to be the case for the next uh, few days. And that will happen again when we have additional uh, students coming back in grades four through six on the 22nd of February. So again, let's make sure that we're being careful and we're being patient. Um, we do expect ridership to uh, increase on our buses in the future, but right now at this point in time, parents are playing it safe and are um, driving students to and from school. So again, please do your best to be as safe as possible. Um, on behalf of all the meteorologists in the greater Connecticut area, I apologize for the complete miss today with regard to the weather. Uh, it's certainly frustrating to lose an in-person learning opportunity, um, but as you know, we always focus on the safety of our students and our staff first. As today was a remote learning day, uh, this will not be a day that we will need to add to the calendar. So right now at this point in time, um, we are looking at the last day of school being Monday, June 14th. 
Um, with the flexibility afforded us by the state, uh, we've utilized the first two weather closures as traditional snow days, and then the subsequent two days we've had have been remote learning. So again, right now, Monday, June 14th is the last day of school for students. Um, with the short week due to professional development this coming Friday, um, tomorrow will be an in-person learning day for grades pre-K through three and cohort two for grades four through 12. Please note that there will be no school next Monday and Tuesday uh, for President's Day and winter recess. I do wanna remind families who may be traveling during this vacation time, you're strongly urged to monitor the current travel advisory guidelines. This came out to you in a communication today and it is up on our website. It is extraordinarily important um, as we move to more in-person learning that families who have been traveling to areas uh, on the travel advisory uh, adhere to quarantining process as well as testing requirements. Again, please check our website for further information regarding the testing um, protocol and quarantining as well. I'm proud to say we'll have our first budget workshop tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this workshop will be held virtually via Zoom. Tomorrow's workshop marks the first of three scheduled uh, workshop events to review our priorities and needs. I do want to let members of the public know that uh, tomorrow's meeting will feature a public comment session where members of the public may uh, weigh in on items related to the uh, budget. So we're looking forward to starting that process tomorrow evening. Uh, on the financial front, I do want to let uh, members of the community know that uh, Weathersfield will be receiving additional funding uh, from the federal government via the state. Uh, this is called the Elementary and Secondary School Education Relief Act, known as ESSER. This is part two. Weathersfield will receive $1,214,993. These funds are designed to supplement district needs related to COVID-19 and are not intended to supplant municipal operating budgets. The state has outlined parameters under which districts may allocate these funds, and we expect the grant application to open later this month we're currently reviewing the funding parameters as well as planning for the opening of that grant application. Before you this evening is the approval of phase three work for the long range building planning for our elementary schools. This is the resumption of the planning that we've undertaken over the past couple of years that has included an enrollment study, facilities assessment of our five elementary schools, and the development of building scenarios that blend new construction, renovation, and consolidation. This plan is expected to encompass the next decade and is critical to ensuring the long range viability of our elementary schools. Upon approval this evening, we will be asking for funding for this phase from council from the 2% reserve fund. I'm also very pleased this evening uh, to have Charles Brown, the director of the Central Connecticut Health District with us uh, during reports and discussion items. He'll be providing us an update on uh, where we are with the uh, COVID pandemic as well as vaccines and our uh, learning model. So, uh, Charles, thank you for being here. And then also this evening, you have an action item before you concerning a uh, budget transfer. So we have some of our teacher leaders here along with uh, Assistant Superintendent Destoli, which uh, they will be providing a little update on that particular item. So, and uh, with that, that is communications this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to action items. Do we, Mr. Michaels, do you have a motion for us? Yep. I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a budget transfer for fiscal year 2021, 2020 to 2021, uh, per the attached memo from Mrs. Estoli to Mr. Emmett. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. What's Thank the you. amount of that transfer, Chuck? What's the amount, Mr. Uh, Mr. Michaels, again? I thought that was, was in the motion. Let me look. There was, the sorry, there. There is no, there is no amount, in the motion. amount in that motion, but the, the memo identifies a transfer will be for $255,000. Thank you, Mr. Stoli. Thank you. I didn't see it either, Lou. <laughs> All right. So just so the board knows that the last finance meeting, the finance committee recommended to move this to student programs and services, but because we don't have a meeting till next month, Mr. Stoli asked if they could do a presentation for the full board. Oh, of GoMath, so I, Chris and I thought that, that would be perfect. So Mr. Stoli, it's on you. Thank Great. you. Just give me one minute here and I'll share my screen. I think we're good, can everybody see it? Yep. So, 
thank you so much. Um, we are excited to be here and I'm uh, really excited to have uh, three of our uh, teachers here today. Sarah Johnson curriculum specialist are Charles Wright, Laura Veda, who's our sixth grade math teacher at Hamner and also our teacher of the year. Uh, Christina Gallucci from grade one at Hamner um, will also be speaking today on Go Math. So Go Math was actually adopted by the Board of Education back in 20, uh, 2015 and the district um, embarked into a six year license that expires at the end of this year um, and how fast six years go. So um, this math program is used for our K-6 students as our core math program. So today we wanna provide a little bit of an overview um, about our core math program and uh, why we're recommending a three-year renewal of Go Math. So I wanna start and talk a little bit about uh, why Go Math has been so um, important and why we uh, originally adopted Go Math six years ago. So we are incredibly um, happy with Go Math uh, given the pandemic and the move to go to a remote and hybrid learning model because unlike some of the other math programs we looked at uh, six years ago, Go Math has an incredible um, uh, component of technology and tools and is really a robust math program. It focuses a lot on our real world application and problem solving and math practices that are so important to our students as they conceptually learn math. Um, while it does provide some of the uh, um, kind of basic math conceptual uh, work, and also kind of probably how you and I might've learned math in many ways, but also supports with that conceptual work that's so important um, that we know about how students learn math and um, you know, math is taught very different than it was 20, 25 years ago. Um, so with that, there's a lot of tools to provide hands-on opportunities for our students. Um, there's a lot of flexibility. It provides us differentiation tools uh, to meet the needs of our students. So this list it really is some core ideas that were important to Weathersfield Public Schools uh, when looking at a math program. And six years later, this list is really just as important for meeting our needs in the current situation. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah Johnson. Thank you. So as you heard uh, Mrs. Distoli say, there were definitely a lot of things that were very important to us as we were looking for a program. Our committee, when it was formed, uh, examined numerous programs and we were really looking for the components that would have what we valued. And so primarily we were looking to make sure that it was aligned to the standards and that the lessons and activities, that the alignment was made very clear for teachers, how the, that lesson fit into a sequence of lessons. We wanted coherence to see a logical progression of skills. And we wanted to make sure that every lesson and activity made it very clear to teachers um, what that standard was, what the prerequisite standard would be and how they could push their students forward. In addition to that, we were looking to see that there would be a component of the program that would develop fluency of computation. And so we wanted to be able to make sure that there was plenty of practice for students. Um, and so there is a fact fluency builder that's recommended at the beginning of every lesson. We wanted to see that students were using efficient strategies in order to build their accuracy. Um, but more so than just that rote procedural knowledge, we wanted to make sure that students had a deep understanding of why those strategies worked. And so you'll notice that in the math program, there are lots of different strategies that are introduced. There's a lot of analysis where they're looking at other people's work and trying to figure out what did they do? Um, why did it work? Why didn't it work? What were their mistakes? Um, that deep understanding of how things work and not just learning the tips and tricks and the memorization is what allows our mathematicians to then apply their knowledge to a novel situation. Go Math is a very language based program. And so this allows our students to have opportunities to practice their literacy skills. When they're reading a problem, we don't want them to just pluck the numbers out um, and try to guess at the operation. We really want them to be thinking about what that problem is um, contextualizing. I want them to be able to be able to draw pictures and create models and have multiple ways to come at a problem. So that deep understanding was a very important part of the program when we were looking. Um, Ultimately, we're looking for something that have, has that dual intensity, right? We need our students to have procedural knowledge. We need them to have lots of repeated practice, but we also need them to see those skills in context so that they can apply knowledge to anything in life. 
Mrs. Destoli, if you wanna, there we go. So some quick facts, you did hear her say that we adopted this program back in 2015. We do have access to K through eight. This is amazing for our teachers because as you know, in any grade level, you will have students who are ready for that grade level content. You will have students who have some gaps in their learning and need to develop some prerequisite skills. And you have students who are ready to be pushed forward. So every class has access to all of the grade levels before and after. Um, all of those lessons are aligned to the standards and teachers can see a view of what comes before and after. The program is organized by domains, which really helps us to focus on what's most important at every grade level. Um, the other part of uh, GoMath that is really excellent is the plethora of activities for differentiation. So every single lesson comes with a reteach opportunity and an enrichment opportunity. There is also a box in every lesson with a list of things that you can do with your advanced learners and also some scaffolds for your English language learners. The other resources that are available within the program come from the Think Central platform. And teachers are able to access numerous differentiation opportunities. There are response to intervention activities that are great for some of our uh, students who just need a little bit more than what the rest of the class might need. So our tier two and our tier three students are able to access strategic intervention and intensive intervention. Uh, the dual platforms, uh, everything comes paper and pencil. Students have workbooks, teachers have hard copy, teacher's editions, which we love to mark up and um, make notes in, but we also have everything online. Um, and to speak more about those online uh, parts of the program, we have Mrs. Veda. Sorry, I'm like one of my kids. I go to talk and I'm muted and I just realized that. So I was one of my students. Um, as Mrs. Johnson shared, uh, while as teachers, we utilize our teacher manuals and our student workbooks daily in our classroom, Think Central is the online platform that teachers and students can access for resources and assignments. Um, the utilization of Think Central looks a little bit different in a primary grade than an upper grade. Um, speaking to my primary colleague that is on this um, meeting tonight to discuss, she shared that primary and grades access the animated lesson videos to help teach the content, reteach the content, animated math models are used to help students conceptualize and understand new skills that are being taught and reinforce those skills in the classroom. Um, as an upper grade teacher, I teach sixth grade. Our students are more independent with technology and therefore my students use Think Central for daily assignments, instructional tools, and assessments, both formative and summative. Uh, the Think Central platform provides students access to the curriculum from home, which I can say has truly been invaluable this year um, in the midst of the pandemic. To be able to not really even miss a beat to go and march from in-classroom learning to at home, and students were already comfortable with Think Central, and both students and teachers um, have gained more familiarity with that Think Central platform and realized how rich um, that program is. Um, teachers utilize the digital resources through an e-planner. Um, there is electronic access for students and teacher additions. Personally, I love the differentiation that Think Central allows while I'm only given the workbooks in my classroom for on grade level um, curriculum. I have access to all of the curriculum online. So I have students, some of my SRBI students, I, I can create assignments to fill in some of those gaps when needed, but I also have access to middle school content for my students that need um, to be pushed and challenged. There's also a, an online assessment system. Um, the assessment system is very robust. There are pre-assessments, show what you know assessments, mid-chapter check assessments, individual lesson assessments, end of chapter assessments um, that we can use to utilize for formative assessment, SRBI data, as well as summative assessment. 
The performance tracker that is associated with Think Central also helps to drill down the student data by standard. So we really can help assess, it helps the teacher in planning to be able to assess what those gaps are so that we can utilize the paper resources or the digital resources to then fill in the gaps. So that's a little bit more about the digital path. Hi everyone, um, as Mrs. Johnson mentioned earlier, GoMath truly lends itself for teachers to um, offer their students differentiation and intervention. GoMath lessons um, support is built into every lesson so that all learners can achieve success. The Teacher Edition offers so many supports and resources for teachers to truly um, support every type of learner, our advanced learners, our on-track learners, our L learners, and SRBI learners as well, based on student assessment. The Teacher Edition offers teachers with support to front load strategies for our L learners, such as truly offering um, ways to reword problems in a way to, for students to better understand the questions that are being asked and also to front load vocabulary so students are, um, are able to understand the verbiage and the vocabulary that's being taught within the lessons. In addition, Go Math addresses every level of SRBI. The hands-on support, as we've mentioned, is truly remarkable. To see students have the ability to um, have so many manipulatives at their, um, to be able to have this hands-on approach and to have materials to be able to learn the concepts has been amazing. And to see it at a young level, to see students be able to once again have those materials um, has been wonderful. The print support also addresses and allows teachers to differentiate their instruction. Reteach and enrichment pages are a great tool for teachers. Reteach is a, a tool that allows teachers to truly break down and further explain a concept to students um, if they're having a difficult time understanding a particular concept. And the enrichment pages allow for our high flyers to um, really for us as teachers to push them to deeper level thinking and to really expand their thinking and uh, work with deeper uh, thinking problems and allow them to solve those. As we mentioned earlier, Go Math allows us as teachers to have access to every grade level. So if a student is not quite understanding even after the reteach lesson, we can go to the grade level below and pull resources from that grade level and thus, um, along with the enrichment, we can also go to grade levels above to pull and connect concepts so that students um, can receive the support that is needed. In addition, there's comprehensive online intervention solutions for teachers to utilize. And lastly, the assessment strategies that are included um, in the teacher edition allow us to really assess our students. Every chapter in Go Math starts with a page called Show What You Know, and this allows us as teachers to really identify what our students know prior to starting the chapter. So we're able to really look at what our students know or possibly don't know and allow us to really start to form groups and provide and start to set up intervention um, before we even get going with a particular chapter. Go Math also offers many assessments for us as teachers to provide to our students and for us to align with our teaching. As mentioned, the Show What You Know is a great form of diagnostic assessment. And then as we begin each chapter, after a few lessons, the chapter, chapters allow us to pause and offer students a mid-chapter review, which allows teachers to adjust their teaching either for an individual student or for a small group before moving on with the remainder of the chapter. And then we end each chapter with a chapter review, which reviews every lesson or every concept taught within the chapter. Um, and then the chapter review is a great example of what students will be doing on their end of chapter test. So once again, um, 
GoMath truly offers teachers a plethora of support and tools to guide each student in their classroom. So Waggle, <laughs> um, Waggle is actually something that we just came to learn about. And as we went to explore uh, the process of renewing GoMath, HMH presented us with this online program. It's cost neutral. They gave it to us. Um, uh, and then uh, we were able to get our free teacher digital licenses. Um, and so this program that we're going to be looking at is would be a supplemental program. We're looking to explore it with um, our tier two and tier three students. Um, however, it is a program that's designed for all students. Right now it's up and running for grades two through six. Um, and in the fall, they anticipate having K and one all set and on board. And what we've learned about this is that it's a digital platform that allows students to have access to lessons. And there are two different ways that students can do this. There are some diagnostic assessments that will place the students into the program in an appropriate place, um, then take them through a series of lessons. The lessons are have built in incentives where children build an avatar to try to build engagement and they go on adventures. And when they um, are able to meet their challenges, they get rewards. Um, so very um, motivating for our students. Um, one of the things that we're looking at with this program though is that teachers also are able to have complete control over where kids go. So a teacher does not have to rely on a diagnostic as you know, a student could be taking an assessment and um, be having a bad day, having an off day, not been able to focus. So if a teacher looks through that assessment and feels that a child needs something else, if they're looking at in-classroom data and they're noticing a discrepancy in the data, the teacher has complete control to move the child in the program and look at different skills. So this is something that we're going to be exploring um, as part of the renewal process. And uh, we're always open and um, excited to learn about supplemental resources. So to sum up our thinking on Go Math and why we feel that we should renew this program for three years, one of the biggest reasons is that teachers are familiar with this program's assets. It allows us to focus on supporting students' instructional needs. After this past year in particular of teaching in the middle of a pandemic, now just does not feel like the right time to make such a drastic shift. I think a big reason, as I touched on before, while teachers were able to be as successful as we have been in transitioning from a in-person model to a remote model to a hybrid model, now back to an in-person model, is because of that familiarity with our curriculum and resources. And to be able to utilize that again next year will only increase teachers' confidence as well as students' confidence as they're using the same programs and tools from year to year. It's student confidence as well, but there's a familiarity there. Um, as I already touched on, I think Central is the, at the strong digital components of GoMath. It is truly a very rich resource. I still am learning new things that are available on Think Central as I collaborate with grade level colleagues or colleagues of different grade levels that I did not know were there. I'm creating just today, I created an assessment and I modified that in a way that I never did last year or the year before. Um, because I gave paper tests and now I'm realizing what is available to me, to me on Think Central. I also just want to add something that's not on the slide. Um, a really important piece of this to think about is the strength that this district has in our teachers. In this di district, we have strong, experienced teachers that use our voice to express changes that need to be made in our pacing guide. So this is the resource that does help to drive our curriculum, but it is not the only resource that we use in our classroom. Teachers using their voice, voicing those concerns or questions or adaptations to curriculum specialists like Mrs. Johnson, we are able to adapt our pacing guides from year to year. Those are not set in stone documents. We come together as grade level teams and collaborate so that we are using this resource to the best of its ability per grade level um, from year to year.
think Ms. Scalucci is going to finish this slide. In addition, Go Math truly does align well with our other math curriculum resources. And lastly, it will allow us the next three years to provide us to form a teacher committee to truly review, pilot, and select a new K-6 math program in the years to come. Thank you so much. Uh, does the Board of Education have any questions? Anyone have any questions? Can we take it off shared screen though, Sally? I can't see any, everyone. Yeah, sorry, thank you. I was thinking the same thing. Any questions, board members? Yes, Ms. Granado. Um, Chuck, actually I have a, a compliment. First of all, the Go Math talk was wonderful. I mean, to um, hear the familiarity teachers have with this program just proves this is not the time to change for a new program. Um, you know, we're already going to an un very unsettling time trying to get back to some sort of normalcy and to be changing a program now would not, I think, be the right thing. Then I was pleased to see, because we do need to be progressive with these students, is that there will be a committee set up to possibly look at something for the future. So I think this is the perfect setup. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Granada. Any other board members? Yes, Ms. Evans. Um, can I just ask, so uh, two comments. Thank you so much for your presentation. I have a couple kids at Hanmer and, I, and we're math challenged family, I probably because of mom. And it has helped a lot um, to see my first grader move forward in math and go through that program is it, it, remarkable. And Absolutely. it's easy to use and go through everything. So thank you very much for that. Is there a reason why, uh, what's the reason behind three years is just what popped into my head. Does anybody know? Yeah, um, so typically, um, uh, let me tell you. So three, why three years? Um, we are coming or um, gliding through this pandemic. Um, it will take an entire year to form a committee, a review math programs and actually pilot. Um, seven years ago when we did this process, it took an over a year to really do a comprehensive process. Um, each member on the committee did pilot. I think at that point we had three different math programs they piloted, which was an incredible amount of time and work. Um, and But it is a large um, costly decision that impacts a large number of our students in our districts. So we wanna be able to make that decision. The other thing for three years is that we find that um, after great change, um, our publishers take a couple years to research, develop, and implement new programs. So when the Common Core um, state standards were um, adopted, I want to say it's probably nine years ago now, um, what you found in, in six months is people slapped a sticker on top of a book and said it was Common Core aligned, but they really didn't do anything about it. Two years later, you really saw a change in practices and philosophy. So I'm also optimistic. Uh, you know, we talked about a two-year program and how quickly we could move, but I think that a three-year program allows us to have time to work with the committee. But I'm also excited to see what I we will see come out as new and innovative programs and softwares and philosophies in the next few years as a result of this time of the pandemic and the reliance on technology and learning and everything that um, educational research will learn during this time, I think has the potential to leverage some really exciting things for our students and our awesome. teachers. Thank you so much, Sally. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other board members? Chuck, I have a question. Yes, Not Mr. Cassio. Uh, first of all, thank you. And when the program was being implemented, I was thrilled to hear it. And I'm happy to see that we're moving forward and you're uh, achieving amazing, challenging uh, situations and keep up the good work. And I'm really happy it's working for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Anyone else? All right. That, oh, yes, Mr. Emmett. I'm sorry, Mr. Carey, um, given the fact that this is a budget transfer um, out of the current operating budget, Mr. Kazaka, could you uh, explain to the board where, where this is coming from? Sure. In the January finance subcommittee meeting, we reported a projected savings of just under $700,000. So a portion of that will be utilized for this purchase. 
because there is a digital and a print component to go math, we're going to split it between software and licenses and elementary math textbook account. And you'll see that on the memo. The total cost is about 260,000. We're transferring 255 because there is 5,000 currently available in the textbook account. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kazaka. Anyone else? All right, thank you for the excellent presentation. Thank you for taking time out of your night. I know it's busy time of year and the board appreciates it. Seeing no questions and a motion on the table. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to the next action item. Mr. Healy, I believe you have a motion for us. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve an extension to the current unpaid leave of absence for ID worker ID number 906488. This request is for extended unpaid leave beginning on February 10th, 2021 and continuing through June 30th, 2021 of the current school year. Thank you, do we have a second? Second, I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Cassio, I believe you have the next motion for us. I certainly do, Chuck. It's, uh, <laughs> very exciting for me to make this motion. I move that the Weathershield Board of Education approve the proposed pre-referendum phase three project management oversight. Earlier, Mr. I'm Emick- i that. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> earlier, I, very exciting. I'm glad that we have a, uh, <laughs> earlier, uh, Mr. Emick gave us uh, an overview of what the phase was going to uh, accomplish and in the background handout, we also have it. So with that, I'll make the motion. Thank second. you. Thank you. Was, so Mrs. Granado second? I yeah. second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very exciting motion. Mr. Emmett, do you want to give any more background? At, at this point, then thank you, Mr. Carey. Um, yes. As you know, we have engaged in a, a lot of preliminary work over the past couple of years with regard to phase one and phase two. Uh, phase one was a facilities assessment, um, and we found that our elementary schools, uh, to repair them back to the way they were, so to speak, we were looking at north of $31 million. Um, we also did an enrollment study, and this enrollment study demonstrated remarkable stability in the town of Wethersfield. Um, and then we embarked upon phase two, where we talked about various scenarios, which uh, included a combination of uh, building new, renovating is new, and consolidating, and potentially going from five schools to four. Phase three really gets into the kind of the nuts and bolts, with the due diligence efforts with geotechnical investigations, uh, preliminary hazmat investigation, a phase one site assessment, um, the development of educational specifications, development of a long range schedule and budget development. So, um, and again, from the funding perspective here, we'd be requesting from the town council uh, to utilize the funding out of the 2% reserve fund. Mr. Kazaka, that 2% reserve fund is currently sitting at what, sir? In terms of the number. We were I think we're around a hundred thousand and a little excess of that. Okay. So there's it, definitely funding available. I thought there was more than that, Mike, from our last meeting. Yeah, we'll verify that to make sure. Yeah, because yeah, I'm getting I have two different numbers in my notes and something that I Chuck sent out, but it, you know, me with numbers, I can't say I'm the valid person here. So I, I, Elaine, the hundred could be I could be netting out the cost of phase three to get to that hundred. So let me verify and then I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, just send us an email, Mike and um, Matthew. You don't have to get back to us tonight. Thank you. Any other any questions or comments? All right. Seeing none with a motion on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes.
Moving on to reports and discussion items. COVID-19 update with Mr. Charles Brown from the CCHD. Thank you very much, Mr. Kerry. Uh, it gives me um, great uh, privilege to introduce to you Mr. Charles Brown. He's the director of the Central Connecticut Health District. Uh, Charles and I have, I think, talked every single week since about February 27th of uh, 2020. So yeah. um, he has been integral in our decision-making process, and I wanted to uh, have him come before you this evening to have him talk a little bit about the pandemic, how it's impacted Weathersfield, uh, vaccinations, learning model, and then offer up uh, any questions that you may have for him. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Um, so I, I will say it's been an interesting year. Um, our staff at CCHD have actually been tracking uh, the pandemic since December of 2019. Um, so they saw the cases rising in Wuhan uh, and, it, and around the January timeframe, they came to me. Uh, we said, you know, this is something that we absolutely have to let our towns know about. And we actually started engaging with our towns in late December or, or late uh, January of last year. So it's been a very, very long year. Uh, not one that we would have, have uh, wanted, but I think that it's been something that we've definitely learned from. Since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, Weathersfield has um, accumulated a total number of cases as of the 8th of February of 2,370 cases. And unfortunately, we've also seen 31 deaths um, in Weathersfield. Um, you know, we do meet with the school um, personnel regularly. Uh, as, as Michael said, we've been meeting since probably weekly in the EOCs uh, since late February of last year um, to really address what we can do to really uh, help our communities make it through this pandemic. Uh, right now, we're on the cusp of actually going on offense, and that's where um, I've been waiting to do what I've been waiting to do for some time now. Um, so as many of you know, we have that, we have the vaccines, uh, to just yesterday, we actually got to expand that, uh, beyond the 75 plus, uh, to open up into the, uh, 65 and above. Um, so we were happy to be able to allow, uh, folks to begin, uh, registering for vaccinations mm -hmm. starting on Thursday. Um, Central Connecticut Health District, we do a lot of, uh, flu vaccines normally, uh, we just here in the past week uh, have gotten our first COVID vaccines, and that was a, uh, mainly due to the fact that we needed some special equipment that we did not have uh, to be able to handle the vaccine itself. Um, so we had to buy a freezer, uh, actually got that installed, uh, the data loggers for the temperature so that we can make sure that the vaccine remains safe and in, in proper cold chain. And then we're ready to actually start um, with our first vaccinations within the district uh, tomorrow, and then having uh, a very small clinic uh, in Weathersfield uh, on Thursday. So we are focusing right now on the most uh, hard to reach 75 plus uh, residents of each one of our towns. We've been working with social services, working with uh, the senior centers, to be able to identify those folks, uh, have them put on a list and prioritized, and then our nurses and our staff are, are going to actually put together a clinic uh, to be able to, to start vaccinating those folks. Um, we really looked at this as trying to reach the most difficult people because they were challenged through either functional needs or transportation uh, about being able to reach the vaccine. Many of you have, have said tonight that y'all have gotten vaccinated and it makes my heart really happy uh, to know that people are actually going out there and receiving the vaccine. Uh, and we encourage everyone that if they can receive this vaccine, please take advantage of it when it becomes your turn. Uh, we're also working very hard uh, with uh, school personnel to be able to establish plans for when the essential workers um, are actually uh, come up to be able to vaccinate them 
uh, in a clinic that's that's convenient to them. Uh, so we're actually been working to uh, with the emergency management uh, and school personnel to be able to uh, set up plans to be able to vaccinate personnel at the high school. Uh, with that, I'll stand uh, to answer any questions and provide any information that I can. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Any board members with questions? Chuck. Yes, Mr. Lesser. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one comment and one question. The comment is, uh, Charles, you have been absolutely amazing. I want to say a big thank you for all you've done for Weathersfield and all your towns. Uh, I sit on the reopening committee and Charles is there every step of the way and been advising Michael and his team and the rest of the reopening committee on what is best for Weathersfield and keeping Weathersfield safe and uh, getting our kids back in school. So Charles, you've been nothing short of amazing. Thank you. My question has to do with the last part you were talking about, which is the teachers uh, getting vaccinated and have, hopefully having a clinic available at uh, Weathersfield High School. As you probably know, and you probably get the question even more than I do, or more than we do, but the, the, the million dollar question is when? And do you have, I mean, we get teachers, we get uh, parents asking us all the time, Michael, you get it, we, we get it as board members. Do you have any estimates or a best guesstimate? We've heard things like March, maybe early April, but do you have a sense of when the state will be uh, likely in the phase where teachers are going to get vaccinated? I think that that estimate of, of March, early April is probably as close as I can come with a guesstimate. And I checked my crystal ball and my magic eight ball to be able to come up with both of those estimates. Um, no, I mean, really the biggest limiting factor that we have right now is availability of the vaccine. Um, so hopefully here in the next week or so, we'll get Johnson & Johnson uh, approved for emergency use authorization that will help add additional supply. Currently, the state of Connecticut's only getting about 58,000 doses per week. Um, and, you know, that's up from 40,000 here a couple weeks ago. So we are seeing an increase in the supply. And I think Connecticut's done a very good job uh, in assuring that those doses, you know, are getting into people's arms. Um, when they added the 65 plus though, They've added 350,000 more people to the line in the queue uh, to get vaccinated or to have the opportunity to get vaccinated. So it's going to take a little bit of time for us to work our way through that particular group of the population. And it's very important that we do so because ages 65 and over really suffer disproportionately. Uh, mortality to this particular disease. So everything that we can do to protect them is, is what we need to do. And the teachers, I, I know, um, definitely are one of our priority groups, uh, along with all those who, who are essential workers. And I believe they're going to be the next ones that get called. So being able to plan and work with the town personnel has really been a, a great thing for us. weathersfield has been absolutely amazing. Um, from the point where we're actually we're getting uh, personal protective equipment and Weathersfield supports all four of our towns by going to pick that up from uh, from its uh, point of origin uh, so that we can distribute it to healthcare providers and things of that nature. So, you know, we look forward to once we having have the vaccine and that phase starts of being able to efficiently get that um, that clinic up and running so that we can get the shots in the arms. Thanks, Charles. And Michael, just to follow up on that, we do have a number of teachers in that 65 to 74 age group who are going to be eligible uh, now, correct? That is correct, sir. We uh, uploaded uh, approximately 54 staff members uh, today, this morning. So they've all gotten emails to get into the VAM system. And at last count, and this is just a rough estimate, but including our nurses, which were included in phase 1A, and our 75 and older and our current 65 to 74, we currently have 77 staff members for the Weathersfield Public Schools that have had access to get the uh, vaccine. So we're making progress. We're not there yet, but we're definitely making some progress. Great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Charles. Any other board members with questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for coming. It's been a pleasure sitting on the reopening committee with you, and I look forward to continually working.
No, thank you for having me. It's my honor to be able to serve our communities. And, and I really do appreciate you having me here tonight. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Moving on to announcements and information. Board members, please make sure you check your packet for any upcoming committee meetings. If you can't make it, let the chair of the committee know. Meetings held, facilities and maintenance committee. Mr. Cassio, I know you weren't there. Would you like Mr. Michaels to give you the update? Lou? You gave me an update earlier, Charles, uh, Chuck. Yes. So, so do you want me to just repeat what you told me in via text message or is there more to it? No, no I mean, that's fine. Or it, yeah, that's fine. It was what we discussed at the motion as well, correct? Yep. So anyways, the committee meeting that took place on uh, February 4th uh, requested that the phase three be moved to the Board of Ed for their vote so that we could uh, ask the council to consider the use of the 2% fund to pay for the phase three. Is, is there any additional information that needs to be added? Any committee members chime in? I think John, Mr. Um, Emmett gave us a full list before. So I think he did a fine job with what you said. And one, one other thing, uh, folks, that uh, was discussed at that committee meeting was uh, Sally Katz provided an update with regard to uh, current conditions of buildings. Um, she noted that uh, we had some heating issues at Charles Wright. Um, so those I know continued over the course of the weekend, uh, but uh, going to Charles Wright uh, yesterday morning with the kids being in, with the exception of the media center, everything seemed to be working out nicely. Um, physical services staff was there uh, and they have replaced uh, a couple of motors. And I think that uh, the condition of uh, the heating system there is really the reason why we need to move forward with uh, long range building plans. So thank you. And Chuck, you know, from that meeting notes, the facilities on February 4th, not to make Matthew feel bad or anything. Matthew, I got, I have down the 2% reserve from Sally is 160,000. So you were real close. So if people want to know what's in there. <laughs> and that's correct. Now, I, I was believe me, me correcting you with numbers. Is that a joke or what? <laughs> I, mean, I had netted it out in my mind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, meetings held the Weather Show, the Early Childhood Collaborative, the W, the WEC uh, 2821. Ms. Granado. Yeah, the WEC meeting was rather long because we had canceled our January one, but WEC is the Weather Show, Early Childhood Collaborative, and we met on Monday, February uh, 8th, um, in a virtual meeting. And the mission of WEC is that all Weather Seal children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners, and connected to the community. WEC's strength continues to be the ability to attract and retain culturally, linguistically, and socially, economically diverse families in all its programs. The United Way grant ended on December 31st and WEC lost the position of the accountability coordinator due to the lack of funding. The job functions lost include clear impact scorecard data. Um, collection and administrative support. And as you know, this data collecting is so important with these little ones. PEP 2021 is being funded by the Parent Trust Fund Grant. We have nine parents already enrolled and this is the fifth year of the PEP program. Family Learning, which is the preschool that was at Trinity Episcopal, um, is a two gen group and we have that now virtual. This is the fourth year and there are 13 families being served. Um, summer successful transition to kindergarten program is now working with the Weathersfield public school system and is gonna be held at the web school as in the past. Again, it's a two gen program with children who do not have a pre-K um, experience, but they are going to kindergarten in the fall and their parents will be coming with them to this program, not to kindergarten in the fall. This program has served 48 families in the past four years. Um, there's a virtual preschool program too. Meredith Bennett is the town of Wethersfield's preschool teacher. She reports that the TLC's new virtual preschool program um, is a virtual program now, and it's also written up in Wethersfield Life. 
WEC brought together the town preschool staff with district staff to assist in creating the program. And WEC um, helped facilitate a $750 book donation from global partners. We also heard from Whitney Simmons from the village about a free upcoming training where participants will learn ways to create anti-bias and cultural responsive classroom environments. Jonathan Singram, a foster care recruiter for the village, um, gave a presentation on recruiting residents who would like to be um, taking care of a foster child in Wethersfield. And Deborah Stewart Karzmowski is the Wethersfield Public School um, site administrator for adult ed. We have dropped from 40 residents signed up for ESL classes to only 14. And Deborah is looking to partner with the Weathersfield Public School and the Board of Ed to help recruit parents who might need free English language classes. And Robin Tibault from the YMCA Global Initiatives gave an update on the YMCA's race and equity work, I told you it was long. Um, Gilly Johnson from the Weathersville Historic Society shared his visit to the WEC Family Learning ESL program. And Kathy Bagley shared how the Weathersville community has been so generous that the social services has filled so much of the town hall with food, the food pantry that there are no rooms and hallways almost un are unavailable. So please use the WEC website for any information about the important work WEC is doing. And I have to say Kim Bobbin, who is the WEC coordinator has been working constantly for funding for her program. And since July of 2016, she has worked to successfully apply and receive $400,000 for WEC through grants. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granado. Meeting scheduled, the special Board of Education meeting budget workshop, 2-10-21 at 6.30 p.m. Correct Council, 2-17-21 at 11.30 a.m. Special Board of Education meeting budget workshop, 2-18-21 at 6 p.m. Special Board of Education meeting budget workshop, 2-21-21, 2 21 at 6 p.m. And then we have Finance and Operations Committee meeting on 2-23-21 at 6 p.m. There is no unfinished business. Mr. Emmett, anyone on for public comment? I have no one in the queue, Mr. Carey. Nobody on for public comment and no emails. Moving on to board comment. Any board members wishing to make comment? Chuck, I have a comment. Uh, I, for meetings that are scheduled, got noticed this evening that the Memorial Day Parade Committee will be meeting tomorrow at uh, 7 o'clock. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. All right. And then as far as board comment, uh, I just want to thank the schools for their update this past packet, uh, chock full of good information and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Anyone else wishing to make a comment? Ms. Paradise. I would just like to recognize Sarah Johnson and Christina Gallucci and Laura Velda for extending their day to us. They put in a full day every day. And um, I appreciate their coming on board tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Evans. Hi, yeah, I just had a quick comment and a quick question, um, probably take away from Mr. Emmett or Sally or something. Um, first is uh, we're super excited to be headed at the elementary level back to kind of a full time schedule. My first grader started and she got to eat in the calf and she was just really pumped to see all of her friends. And it was really, it warmed my heart how excited she was to go back to school and my fourth graders getting ready to do the same. So thank you for organizing that. I think um, it's gonna be great for these kids. Uh, the one question I had is in the beginning of the meeting, they said that um, we as a town were entitled to federal funds of 1.2 million or something like that. And there are certain requirements regarding how you will utilize those funds. Will we get some information at some point on what those requirements are and what, how you'll earmark some of that kind of stuff? Cause that's exciting news. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Kelly. What we'll do is we'll share that at the budget workshop and sure. provide you the parameters along with uh, all of the allocations that all of the uh, the towns got. The allocations were based upon uh, Title I um, allocations from fiscal year 2020. 
Um, so we're very excited about it. And it's really focused on um, all things COVID. So whether it's we need PPE, whether it's uh, mental health services for our students. Um, obviously, we want to be careful with this. You know, we've seen this before with stimulus dollars. We invest them in, in uh, say, staffing positions. And then once the money goes off the cliff and we don't have it anymore, then it becomes a budget impact. However, we think we can be strategic with it. Um, we've already started to talk with teacher leaders and our administrators about where we can um, fund uh, items and programs that we need. The other thing with this one too, Kelly, is it's a little more flexible in terms of the time period that we can spend it. So it's not something where we must spend all at once. We can be really strategic about it. So I will definitely share the parameters uh, as well as the allocation of budget workshop. Fantastic, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, Ms. Granado. I have some uh, closing remarks on two meetings that I went to, I didn't go to, I sat right here, the virtual. One is the Hunger Action Team met on Friday, February 5th in a Zoom meeting. Um, it, it's unbelievable. The Weatherfield Social, uh, Social and Youth Services continues to provide residents with pre-packed bags at curbside pickup. Monthly senior food box and weekend meals are still operating. The residents of the town have been incredibly generous in their daily drop off of food. Um, the joke was as if they were trying to fill a town hall. Services continues with energy assistance, tax assistance, and vaccine information for, for seniors and families. The HAT, the Hunger Action Team, is in need of shelf-stable milk. I've never heard of it. And bus passes. Bus passes can be purchased at the Jordan Lane Stop Shop. Hopeful news is that the next COVID relief bill may be aimed to help our Alice families. And some most concerning news was that 100% of the unemployment applications for December were for women. Um, HAD is working to form a group of volunteers to deliver food to those who cannot get out. Um, if you know of someone who is in need of food, refer him or her to social services. All you need is a proof of re residency to, require, to be required. The Dazzling Dozen continues to collect food. A particular organization is in charge of collecting food during their month. Um, HAD is working on a, a survey to help more people in this very trying time. Weathersville High School Interact Club continues their hygiene drive, so thank you. Um, free breakfast and lunch continues to be available through the Weathersville Public School to any child 18 and younger. And all mobile food share locations are operational. Wrenchler Field Distribution continues on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9.30 to 1. And volunteers are always welcome. And my other meeting happened to do with the Weathersville Education Foundation in which they have um, proposed mini grants. And the purpose of the Wesleyan Education Foundation is for enhancing and enriching our programs. Principals and teachers are now applying for the thousand dollar grants from the Wesleyan Education Foundation for various new programs. I just wanna tell you about some of them. Charles Wright, which is the most diverse of our schools, will use their grant monies to purchase books and stories where children feel the characters are just like them. The budget will focus primarily on the purchase of the books, but there will also be um, posters and banners um, to celebrate their diversity. Highcrest School will be utilizing their grant to purchase programs to meet the needs of students as they work to fill the gaps of learning caused by this pandemic and to creatively move the students forward for academic success. And the Web School is using their grant to fund a 3D printer for a makerspace. If you haven't heard of a makerspace, a successful makerspace in school provides kids with a variety of tools and materials and the freedom to create. A makerspace can be like a combination of a workshop, computer lab, art studio, so the space has to be flexible. And I hope we can watch our students sometime working in such a space. Um, I will also be waiting to hear what the other schools will request to enhance and enrich their curriculum. So thank you for those who have asked for their grant money and for 
the Wellsville Education Foundation for giving them out as soon as they get them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granada. Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three quick updates. One, the mayor's ball closed out the 2020 raising $11,000 virtually, which was truly extraordinary. And the generosity of the people in Wethersfield is fantastic. We've now raised over $111,000 in five years through the mayor's ball and donated it to all of it to social services. We are tentatively planning to have the 2021 ball on Friday, October 1st. We usually do it in June. We realized that wouldn't be possible and fingers crossed we could do it October 1st. My second update is a big thank you. Serving on the reopening committee, I wanna thank the teacher leaders, the principals, John, Sally and Michael are on the phone today and everybody who did so much great work serving on that committee has been a pleasure, but to see all the hard work that everybody's done to get us ready to open the elementary schools yesterday was fantastic. So big thank you, teacher leaders, principals, and all administrators. And third and finally, I wanted to mention I attended last week the Social Justice Coalition meeting, which is really uh, a terrific uh, undertaking here in Wethersfield. We had over 60 uh, folks, uh, Wethersfield folks on the Zoom meeting uh, that really care about our community. And um, I was in one of the breakout sessions and Michael led that breakout session. So Michael, thank you for not only being on it, but being a leader on it. And um, I appreciate um, the, the work there that's being done as well on the Social Justice Coalition. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lesser. Anyone else? Yes, there you go. Yeah, I just had a really quick comment. Um, I just think it's fantastic how uh, the younger learners, uh, learners are starting to come back into school, uh, especially at such a young age. I can only imagine how difficult it would be to, to learn virtually, to not interact with your teacher and your peers. So some, uh, some good news coming out. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Paradise, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to ask Michael, Michael, this new funding we're getting, is this different than the funding we got from Amy Bello the other week? I, I'm trying to find my email from Amy. That's, is this a dif that's different the, amount? Of that's the same funding, Elaine. Okay, thanks. It's same funding. It's what, she, it's what she posted on Facebook, Elaine, with Correct. the requirements. Yeah. Correct. Okay, thank you. That's all. Any other board members? All right. Um, I think it's great that uh, high school sports are starting. I know my Yay. son's been playing ho hockey. I know the basketball team lost a close one, the boys, last night by one. I think they, they were coming back. And I think the girls had a game as well. So it's great to see high school athletics off and running. I also want to echo what Mr. Lester said. Thank you to all the teacher leaders, the administrators, for ho helping with a smooth reopening of uh, K-3 to full time. And I'm glad it went well yesterday and hopefully we continue to go in the right direction. Any board members wishing, I uh, nope, go backwards. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Castle. Second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Evans. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you everyone. See you tomorrow night, budget workshop number one. Exciting yeah. times. Oh, so Good night. Good night.